Greetings, um, welcome to this short video titled Know the Flow. My name is Paul Hackett of H2 Flow Controls and I'd like to take a few minutes of your time today to discuss a really interesting topic related to variable speed pumps. As I think many of us would appreciate today, the fastest growing product segment in the pool industry in the United States today are variable speed pumps, and that's for good reason. They've literally saved tens of millions of dollars. There's a great technology, probably one of the most prolific and exciting technologies introduced to the pool industry in many years. But one of the things that we recognize as a manufacturer uh, for the pool industry is that there are further savings to be had when deploying these products. And the very reason that your customers are today at least interested to deploy these technologies is really to do with the energy savings. And uh, what we are going to see next year in, in the summer of 2021 is actually that the Department of Energy will release a new mandate that will take out of compliance most uh, single speed pumps that are used today. So if you're building a new pool after this new mandate, it will have to use a variable speed pump. And if you're replacing any of the existing single speed pumps, they're going to have to use variable speed. That's not all of them, depends on a number of factors, but the vast majority will go to variable speed. And, and I think personally that this is an exciting uh, way to go. I think there are literally hundreds of million dollars millions of dollars that can be saved uh, by switching to this technology. But one of the things we want to focus on is that we can actually take it one step further and save even more money by knowing the flow. The tendency when deploying these technologies is to use one of the preset speeds. And that's a, that is a very, very good starting point. It will get you close, uh, but it won't take you to exactly where you need to be. The pump speed and therefore the flow rate should be set to achieve the turnover rate required. Uh, and we shouldn't guess that. We should actually set it exactly where it should be. And for example, in the commercial pool world where the health department come and inspect pools for turnover rate, it's critical that they have a working flow meter and many areas require these flow meters to be certified to NSF 50 so that their accuracy has been verified by a third party, simply not a claim made by the manufacturer. And, and that brings up a valid point by the way, some of the pumps that you can find in the market today, in fact one of the most prolific ones, has a flow estimate reading displayed. I would urge you not to use that to know the flow. <clears throat> Again, it's a good estimate, it's a good starting point, and under certain conditions it's reasonably accurate, but under other conditions it can be very inaccurate. And therefore it is what we should term as a flow estimate. Um, <clears throat> I, I want to give you an example here now that if we look at a typical backyard pool of say 30,000 gallons, built in Southern California, used for say 10 months of the year, what we would find is that um, the installer would probably set the pump speed to uh, maybe 3100 RPM based on his best estimate, maybe based on a flow estimate that he's seeing from the pump, um, but that 3100 RPM may be a little bit too high and the example I want to give you is if we knew the flow and we dropped that speed by just 200 RPM we would find that we could save an additional 400 plus dollars per year, which is significant. The life of these pumps is going to be many years, so you could be looking at well in excess of $4,000 of additional savings just by knowing the flow and fine tuning that preset speed. And by the way, even if we drop the, the RPM only by 100 RPM, we'd save in excess of $200. More than enough to pay for a flow meter in one year. And that energy savings, of course, then goes on for many years to come. And in fact, to demonstrate this, we would encourage you to uh, go to the link uh, that's shown in this video um, beneath uh, where I'm at right now, and also in the text below. And that will take you to a calculator where you can 
actually experiment with changing the different RPMs by just a few hundred RPM to see what your energy savings would be. You went to some data about the pool, how big it is, where it's located, how many months of the year it's going to run for, but then it will allow you to see what the effects are of just making minor changes on the speed. And I think you're going to be quite surprised how much the energy savings are. So with that said, I think um, it, it, the message of the video is simply to encourage you to use a good quality flow meter, not one, for example, that is also available in the market that suggests that all pools are built equally, they're all built the same, and you should simply aim for a, a range on a flow meter scale. Um, that's not going to get you these energy savings that I'm talking about here, and neither would the flow estimate that's built into the pump. So with that said, I want to thank you again for watching the video, and uh, if you have any questions, of course, uh, we're here at H2Flow to help you at any time. Thank you.